fat, drunk, and stupid is no way to go through life, son. I just I have so much to ask you about. Let's start start back with the Blues Brothers. Uh, I don't the the more people I talk with about your involvement in the Blues Brothers, the more I get to understand how involved you were with the Blues Brothers. Tell us a little bit about beyond the movie itself, where it started in your involvement. Here's a story you've never heard. Uh, I was at the first meeting about the Blues Brothers uh, with John and Danny in John's office in 1978, I think it was, uh, and they told me about this idea of these two characters they were working on and. Uh, so uh, what do you need from me guys? So they needed a, an arrangement of Rocket 88 by James Cotton. So I wrote an arrangement, we rehearsed the Saturday Night Live band and we did our little routine for Lauren Michaels, the producer. We didn't make the show. <laughs> John, John, John says, well Lauren, can we warm up the audience before the show? And he says, sure. So we played our little song and, and the people seemed to enjoy it. The following week, John and Danny are still hot on this idea of the Blues Brothers. So uh, uh, we, I did an arrangement of a song called uh, Hey Bartender. And uh, we, we, did it, we did it for Lauren Michaels, and Lauren said, frankly, I don't see anything funny about the Blues Brothers. <laughs> you know, so, he is kind of a stick in the mud, isn't he? Well, no, actually, actually, Lauren's a very nice man. He's always been very nice to me. He has a great sensibility. I guess, uh, I don't know. So the following week, uh, <clears throat> John and Danny figured, well, it's a dead issue, and we didn't do anything the third week. And after read-through, Lauren comes out, and he says, the show's three minutes short. What are we going to do? <laughs> and so John and Danny jumped on him and they said, Lauren, the Blues Brothers. So as if to say, well, we have nothing worthwhile to put in those three minutes. You guys might as well make fools of yourselves. <laughs> he, he put the Blues Brothers on the show. And we, the, the switchboard lit up the next week with, with phone calls and letters and cards started pouring in. Obviously, the, the TV audience loved the Blues Brothers. So the next thing you know, we, we, we were back on the show with the Blues Brothers. We um, formed a band separate from the Saturday Night Live band. They call it the Blues Brothers Band. Our first job was opening act for Steve Martin at Carnegie Hall. <laughs> Who says you don't start at the top? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, uh, next thing you know, Danny uh, uh, and John get a record deal for us with Atlantic Records. We go out to the amphitheater in Los Angeles. We do uh, nine nights there. They edited an album out of it called uh, Briefcase Full of Blues. Sold three million Amazing. copies. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, and, and we had a, we had a hit hit single. We had a hit single on a song called Soul Man. Uh, I've heard of that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and maybe we'll get the band to play that later. Maybe. And and, and, and um, uh, so the next thing you know, uh, Dan Aykroyd starts writing a script for a movie, and he interviews all the guys in the band, and we're telling the stories about playing in sleazy clubs in Mississippi with, with chicken wire and stuff like that. And, and the next thing you know, uh, Universal Pictures picks up the movie and boom, wow. there we are. And the I guess the, the rest, as they say, is sort of history. That's amazing. What an amazing story. What an amazing thing to be a part of in your time. Yeah.